Coming to the question of how post offices become important, they become important in multiple ways. Post offices, uh, in some sense, are the largest retail network, in a, in, in a way, uh, when you consider e-commerce. And similarly, a lot of uh, society interacts with uh, uh, the, the trading system or sends their, their requests or receives uh, products uh, very much through the system which is either similar to post office or it is in the in the realm of the postal services so uh, if we take the uh, scope of services of post office uh, not just as delivering letters which was something which is historical but not the the way uh, postal services are seen today uh, and you you get in, get into uh, all kinds of delivery services, you get into information, you get into verified documents, etc. And very quick mail, the hybrid mail uh, which, which we have seen. When you combine all this and superimpose on that the fact that international trade today is actually conducted very much through supply chains. So you have production not just in one spot, but parts of products or services supplied by different countries or different parts within a country and you have to connect them in order to come out with the final product and delivery to the consumer. The logistics, the post office or the postal service, the, the importance becomes crucial at each stage. So not just at the final stage but each stage. So as we see the advent of the postal service uh, sector and the new services also which are adding on, in some sense, the importance of postal services for trade and the importance of trade facilitation for trade have merged. And what was seen earlier as a point-to-point -point communication is now a multiple point communication. The importance had, has merged and it has magnified. That is a short summary of, of the key uh, aspect. I think uh, if you see the framework of the kind of discussions we are having at, at, the, at the WTO, we can see a framework with interrelated components which involve customs procedures, which involve timeliness, which involve uh, an ability uh, for products uh, to uh, fit into the modern business techniques uh, uh, because in, in a supply chain, if, if things don't flow uh, easily, you lose your co competitiveness and thus business opportunities. So the aim is to develop a system which is integrated, addresses, to put it shortly, uh, constraints and restraints, and in order to do so, there is a need to upgrade capacities, especially for the large majority of countries, to have information available. So it's good to first take a bird's eye view at the key aspects of what it would be required. And of course, this is only a part of it because the infrastructure, the underlying infrastructure, whether it be road, whether it be uh, uh, go downs or uh, it be uh, the clearance system at, uh, at uh, uh, ports or, or at the border, the number of documents required. So if you, if you take into account issues which affect ease of doing business, those are the aspects to look at and we already have those templates. And to develop them in a way that they are simple, they are more or less harmonized according to the ability of the nation. And over time, we move forward to greater simplicity and harmonization.